Hello everybody and welcome once again to All of Fabric 3. So today we are going to carry on with TIS 3D and we're going to have a look at some more modules. So let's get started. So the first thing I've done between episodes is to write this little program. What this program does is we get a number and what I'm doing here, I need to select it and I'm not selected yet. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a number here and converting whatever's typed into a number. And if it fails, then it's not a number. If it's too big, which means it's more than 30, then it's not, it, it, it prints out not a num number too large. What it does is basically set a redstone level on this on this um, output of this computer here. So there's two outputs, there's one at the top and there's one to the right. So if we should face the right side really, shouldn't I? And then we'll just run it. So we'll just go, um, let's just run it. So I need to put control and run. Like that, then he wants a number. So we'll put in the number one to start with, and then it's going to send one to the right and ten and nothing to the top. And you can see nothing's on to the top. In fact, this is like, I think this is a bug. If I put a second, if you, if you look over here now, this program is not running. Nothing's happening in this running because it's got a value of one, which is the poor state. If I put a redstone signal on top of this, oh, I have to press, sorry, can I a shift on it it actually gets a signal of one it's not coming from here it's actually coming from itself and then that starts this programming running which i don't want to do the idea was i could actually make it run twice as fast by having two um signals going into it which you can see is obviously the case and by putting simply putting a redstone signal on, on one of these faces it will actually double the speed not what i want anyway let's just stop this program we can stop the program by typing in zero and then we can start it again by pressing one and it'll sh it'll just come into pause mode like this and it starts at the first three lines and there's actually three programs here and they're all connected to this uh, serial interface here as you can see and in fact i'm blocking the signals going up and i'm blocking the signals going down you can't see that unfortunately um because i've got this hopper in the way and the idea is that when the bottles in here are processed, it will send the items out into this chest here and I will then be able to pick them up. So I've got some water bottles in here. If I take those water bottles out and put them back into here like this, they sit in here and then they will get put into, into this hopper. Uh, no, into this brewing stand when there's nothing, when this signal goes off and then this signal will stay on. So at the moment it's locked, so there's nothing's going in, but it will go out so any any bottles that we put in here for example i've got one in this chest here a mundane potion which, which i didn't mean to create because it's no use i put that into here this will then drop out and come out of here back into here again so i was making some splash potion of poison so that was that was the intention it doesn't work very well i will be honest with you i can't figure out how to get it to work properly <laughs> it's just yeah. But it does emphasize, it does show you a few things. For example, here, what I should do here is, let's have a look at this program first of all. There's three programs, I've labeled them. You can see this one's labeled items, this one's labeled cereal, and this one's la labeled bottles. So I've got some code books for those here. So I've got cereal is here. We will look at that yet because it's a bit on the complicated side. Let's look at bottles and what that does. So what it does is it moves the value up into the accumulator so the value on the upside is from here and to the accumulator now at the moment this actually doesn't do anything let's remove for example let's remove this uh this execution module here let's right click on the wrong one let's just right click it with something off it take remove it let's remove it for example like that and then we can run this program so let's run this program here like this so we'll set a value of two and that'll just run the program very slowly and you'll notice that this one's actually going down here and it's waiting to re and what is one this one's here is also waiting and this is one of the things about execution modules they'll wait for a value to come in like this so it's a blocking io this blocks here and this one's blocking here so what this one has done has actually sent out a pulse let's have a look at this one this is bottles first of all i've got bottles in my hand so let's have a look at bottles where I put it as there's items and his bottles so it moves the value from the bullet from above into the accumulator so it's waiting at this line here and when that's finished then it's moving the value of zero down and underneath here I have got a redstone uh, module 
you can't see it. It's actually really difficult to show, but let's let's just show it. If we go down here like this, we should be able to see this redstone module. And it's actually got the sides of blocks, so it's not being interfered with from anything except for this module, the execution module here. The other three sides are locked. So it's not going to get any uh, values in. And when it's actually up here, this will go turn on. So when we turn it on, it'll turn on like that. But I'll fill in this for the time being. And just put back the blocks. I think one well, should be ready. Like that. So we can actually see this happening. When it does happen, we can see it easily here. And then... I hope they're going to carry on explaining this one because the, both the other ones are the same. So then it sends a, a value of zero down, which means it turns it off, which it is the case at the moment. Then it sends a value of 20 to the right. Now, what have I got on the right hand side here? I have got a, doesn't tell you. In fact, it's easy to find out what the modules are when it doesn't tell you what they are. Or oh, Wyler doesn't tell, Wyler doesn't tell you anyway. So you can take the book here, the reference manual, and right click this on here, and it tells you it's a timer module. So let's have a look at the timer module because we haven't looked at that one yet. And it's basically uses, it says, the timer module uses a high precision quartz to allow, oh, it's a bit strange, it's a quartz clock, I think it's supposed to say, to allow consistent and reliable timed weight operations. It's hardware run on a 20 hertz clock, so that means every every tick is 20 uh, 50th of a second, uh, 50 milliseconds, so at 20th of a second, sorry meaning that the one time step will take exactly 50 milliseconds and the time it's configured to use these clock cycles. The time module is constantly read values from all four ports. Now we've, been, we've covered that before. And in fact, I've blocked, as you can see here, the top and the bottom port. You can see this better with the, let's press escape. Let's look at the press shift on here. You can see I'm blocking the, any signals coming from the top, the bottom, so they don't interfere. So the only ones that can go from left and right I don't think I've got anything on the right hand side here. Uh, no, I haven't. There's nothing There's nothing placed on those sides. Let's go back and look at the time module. It's actually night time, so it should have a sleep. Okay. So what it's doing is it blocks. It's probably easy to look at this and have a look at the, the program and see what it does. So it moves 20 across. So that is basically one second's worth here and then it's moving from the right hand side um, into the accumulator it doesn't matter what i do with this value i'm not going to use the value what this does is it blocks here for exactly one second and then it goes down here and then sets the value 15 to the bottom and then it blocks it, it sends another one second pulse over here so it waits for one second to come back and then it comes back up here in fact it would probably have been more sensible for me to do it like this but you can do you can highlight and do control x but you have to when you do it here you've got to go back one line it's a bit strange it's copy and paste in here but it, it works so we, we then it would automatically run through one time and wait until it gets the value from above so in other words it would empty out i hope the idea is to empty out this here before we start so let's press that right click that on there and then it'll actually now it's going to run as you can see and it's going to set up this so it's this is on and this one is then off so it allows the bottles to come into here as you can see it's got three bottles in here and it's got the three but three bottles in the brewing stand as you can see here so then it's going to wait until this next operation comes and i haven't fixed this bit yet but the same is true for the top one here so if we look at the top one which is items it reverses things a little bit so we're moving items we're moving the value of zero down, which turns off the redstone, I'm sorry, left, which turns off the left zone signal. It waits for one half a second, and this is this bit here, it moves 10 to the right, and it reads from the right, and then it goes, it moves the down bit into the accumulator, so it now waits for the next instruction, and then it, when it gets that, it locks up. I hope this is right. It locks it up again. No, it's, yes, it locks it up, and then it waits another 10 half a second before it starts again it, it, when i finish this we'll, we'll check it out and see what i'm probably doing but the idea was to demonstrate the timer module so let's just do that again and demonstrate the timer module but let's write another quick program so we can actually tell it to send the value down so i've got a code bible here just by itself here we go so this shouldn't have any instructions in it good so what we would like to do 
you would like to move a value, doesn't matter what the value is, down like that. And this was then going to put this into here like this, or we need to put, put the uh, execution module back in again, don't we? So put that in like this. So it's got no program in, as you can see, but when we put this one program in, it's going to then trigger this to run. So let's have a look at what it's going to do. So now it's started, as you can see. So this is the time is now running, and then it's setting, it's basically pulsing this here. So let's just go to the right of it. You can see it actually doing the timer module here as it goes through, because this is going to keep running through like that. And it's just waiting one second. It's not very far. It's quite quick one second. So you can just see the timer counting down. And as it basically gets to zero, it will actually wait at that line. And this, of course, is slow anyway, because I've not turned the value up. If I turn the value up to, say, 15, I should say 16. This is an interesting one. It'll set the top to 15 and the right to 1. <laughs> so the top is not going to put in because we haven't got any values coming in here yet. But you'll see this has now got a value of 15. So if I put the redstone dust down again here, like that, things will run very fast. This should be running almost immediately. It's waiting for one second, of course, for these. So now we should get a one second timer running almost all the time. Like that. So that's how the timer module works. It's night time. I'll be back in a second. So we saw this happening last time. Let's put these bottles back in here again because then you can then see what's happening. It puts the three bottles in, turns them off, and it goes out. They go out again, and you can see that the three bottles are coming in and out in cycles. So the timings are about right. So I think this was uh, twenty was one second time for the to push the three bottles in, and all those bottles have ended up back in here again, as you can see. So the next thing of this process is to actually read from here the serial interface to progress, and that's the bit I've got stuck on. It's easy enough to read the progress, but it's actually the very first time around. You don't want it to keep emptying bottles in and out until you've actually got the ingredients in here, for instance. And that's where it gets stuck at the moment. So we'll leave that for the time and have a look at another module. So we've looked at, so far, we've looked, we looked at the serial module last time, I think. We've looked at the redstone module, uh, which you can see those two. We've looked at the, now we've looked at the timer module. This was actually, a, a, is a stack module. So, have a look at that one. It basically acts like it's just a, very, a memory store is what I was trying to use it for. So let's just right click this. This is a stack module. It doesn't unfortunately tell you, but just either no. Uh, and it basically stores up to 16 values. So you can push values into here and then take them off the top of the stack. Uh, it's a bit complicated, I won't discuss that today. So here we've got some more programs. Let's have a look at this one. So the setup here is I've got a uh, you can't see it. We need to put a signal on here. Let's put a signal on here first of all. So we've got the signal on here. Now we can see what we've got. Here we've got a redstone module here. And so we can right click this and we'll skip to the right page. Uh, infrared module, sorry. So the infrared module pro provides a short line of sight wireless transmission of values, either inside an appropriately structured uh, computer. So you can do this within one computer, or in this particular case I've set it up, we'll do it between two between different computers. In this case we've got two set up. This allows fast communication between multiple systems, avoiding the generic lossy alternative of transmitting through a redstone. So if we wanted to link together, no we'd put redstone here, but this infrared module will allow that to happen automatically. So what it says is here it says this reads values from all four of its ports. We know what that means because we've covered that before, but we'll have a look at that in a second. And emits a an infrared packet based on the value of the, some of those ports. So, and then it receives a port. So the infrared will write the value to last four, of the last value received in the infrared packet to all four ports. So it's reading from all four and it's writing to all four. So let's have a look, and it's got a small cube. Let's ignore the cube for now. Let's go and have a look at this program over here. This is the same. This is almost the same, but this is the, this is the transmitter. And as you can see now, it's got these, these redstone dust telling you these two are linked in here like that. And this one has got is running through here fairly quickly. And so let's have a look at this program. This is the transmitter program. Um, so I've got I've got a, a receiver program which was basically one line. It was 
all that was doing was moving the left hand value into the into the um upwards so it's basically updating this particular um two digit display here what i'm a bit confused it says it moves the value into all four directions so it doesn't seem to be happening but we'll we'll see that in a minute when we put a value on it like that oh actually i've got two programs in here probably shouldn't do. let's get rid of this one it's not right <laughs> and sort it from two pages press escape and then you can look at that again and that's just got the one page this time in fact is it only got the one page as you can see it's not doing any more than that I copied it and of course I copied it and it kept the previous page so let's have a look at the one that's doing the transmission if I can find the book that is there we go so this one here is moving the left hand value up So the left hand value is from this redstone receiver and it's moving it up into the case into this two digit display here and then what's it doing after that it's got a comment which i probably can get rid of and then it's moving the left hand value to the right hand side let's get rid of this comment because it's not necessary in this case like that let's highlight it and press delete and that deletes it and then we can update this it doesn't make any difference to the program at least loop through these now so what that's doing is moving this value here into here so let's have a look we don't know what the value is because it's not in the accumulator but we do know from here it's actually got a value of zero so let's turn this on now let's make this a value of say i think this is about eight yes so this is eight here and you can see this value has got transmitted across to this one and this one is moving the value from the left hand side upwards so it's moving it into this again digit display this is supposed to as i said supposed to emit the value some value to all four port sides but it's not transmitting it to this one which i would have expected it to do maybe not on this one because this is the transmitter side but i do expect it on here because it's not this isn't actually sending any data out so let's have a look at this now and flick this up one more if i press click this button here you can see that they both go up so now the a so next next number should be e Oh, C, sorry. And the last one should be E, like that. And you can see that they're both updating. So that's how the Redstone module works. It also, again, displays how the um, this one this one is working as well. I've got another lever. I have got another lever. Let's put another lever down here. Like, uh, I've got to be careful where I put the lever as it happens. Maybe here will do. And then switch this one on. And then we get F. That's right, yes. Let's turn it off. It goes off. Um, it doesn't affect this program as it happens but what does affect this program is oddly enough this redstone signal here so now if I stop this program here like this you'll notice that it's not stopped running it's still going through and it's what's happening here is that this redstone value is going into this controller and I'm not sure how because as you can see this has got no output here so that means this block is not transmitting any redstone signal, but this one is receiving it. So a bit, it's a bit confusing. So what you have to do in order to get rid of that is you have to turn... Oh, it's wrong way. Let's break this one. Don't want that one here. Let's turn all of these off. And as you'll see, it actually goes slower as it gets the value. So it is reacting to this value, which is the one beside it. And the only time it stops is when I actually turn it, this value off. So if I turn it back on again, it's going to carry on running with a value of eight like that that's the value it's seeing there so that's how that works i think that explains it reasonably well let me know if it doesn't by the way because we're going to have a look at more of these modules and i'm going to see if i can get this bruce down to work properly anyway so that's it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new i'm having a bit of difficulty with tis 3d it's, not, it's a sort of toughish mod but takes a bit of time to get used to. Anyway, hopefully we'll succeed. Until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.